When machines are manufactured in quantities, interchangeability of parts has always been a target for their designers. Perhaps the only thing interchangeable about the old horse bus was the horse. But through the years, the facility to exchange component parts has become the essence of bus design, because it's the essence of bus maintenance. We rightly expect all sorts of things of the bus that carries us. We expect the convenience of bell pushes that work. Clean, comfortable and well-designed seats. Sturdy platforms, firm stanchions. Efficient weatherproofing in all weathers. And a smart and cheerful appearance to enliven the urban scene. High standards, particularly when you consider that none of these things wear out and need replacement at the same rate. So in addition to day-to-day -day care in the garage, after three and a half to four years on the road, every standard bus of the 8,000 in the world's largest unified bus fleet comes into the largest public service vehicle overhaul factory in the world, Aldenham. Aldenham is the fulfillment of a policy begun in 1910. For example, 12 years ago, someone was designing RT bus seats with detachable squabs and cushions with this place in mind. With a standard design, the inspection of each bus is simplified by standard forms, which become the blueprints for the work of stripping and assembling. Now, like a shotgun cartridge going into the breach, the bus moves towards disintegration. First, it loses its identity. Then, divorced from its chassis, it's rotated like a toy on this inverter. This uses an eight horsepower electric motor, and it turns the three and a half ton bus body from vertical to horizontal in 20 seconds. Three and a half years accumulation of oil bound road dirt is pressure hosed away. On to the dry inverter where roof and underfloor are inspected, repaired and modified on the spot. The framework may have to be welded, for example, or electrical wiring renewed. One of the problems with bus overhaul is the movement of bus bodies once they've lost their wheels. This could have been done on trucks, but trucks would have meant wide gangways and greater floor space, besides being an open invitation to congestion and waste of time. At Ordnham, instead of greater floor space and higher running costs, they decided on overhead cranes and a higher roof. A greater initial cost, but a more efficient and, in the long run, more economical way of carrying the load into the future. For the men behind Ordnham had to plan not only for today, but also for the time when trolleybuses go and the 2,000 diesels that will replace them must pass through these shops. Freed from its chassis, a bus body is liable to suffer distortion while being stripped and reassembled. To prevent this, they lower it onto stilts which correspond to the main chassis points, and here it receives the individual treatment prescribed for it. Bus overhaul by these flow process techniques doesn't necessarily mean moving belts. What it does mean is that everything from the time it enters the factory must either be having something done to it or be on the move to the next process, with continuous inspection at every stage to guide and control the work.
the same time, no bus must be held up for want of a part. For instance, if 75 damaged panels are removed from the buses in the standings today, while these are being transported away to pass through cleaning, inspection and control stores prior to repair, the hammers of the metal shop craftsmen must prepare and return 75 identical panels within the five days allowed for rebuilding the body. All efforts must be geared to the same pace, neither slower nor faster. If components come too slowly, there's a hold-up. If they come too fast and accumulate, labor, time and space will have been wasted. Everything must be progressing continuously towards the reassembly of complete buses in 15 working days. While repaired door frame assemblies are being drilled and screwed up in the sub-assembly shop, the machinists in the wood shop must be shaping and cutting enough timbers for repairing or remaking curved roof sections, bulkheads, pillars and corner framing pieces, as well as for the doors to be fitted together in two or three weeks time. While all this continues, in the trimming shop, labor, materials and tools are so provided that the scrubs and cushions that came sliding out of buses the week before last are being made ready to be fitted back on Friday next. A continuous flow process. While metal parts are being degreased and etched for paint adhesion by a chemical technique, others already treated are first enameled and then baked at 300 degrees Fahrenheit. And while others, completely reconditioned, have passed through inspection and control stores and are going back to the help yourself racks and the standings, the bus body from which they came is already reassembled with parts from another bus. Simultaneously, a chassis from a bus that came in yesterday is moving out of the wash along the strip section of the chassis line. Now, Aldenham is only part of a complete bus organization and it has to work in conjunction with the other parts of the parent body. On this line, it accommodates the chassis from one of these other establishments, Chiswick Works. And in turn, it sends Chiswick dismantled units from all the chassis it deals with, including Chiswick's own. At Chiswick, these components are absorbed in the large numbers which come here from the garages. For Chiswick is organized to deal with all such units from the whole of London transport. While the units sent here by Aldenham are being overhauled, Chiswick sends back already reconditioned units from other vehicles to be rebuilt into the chassis moving along the assembly section of Aldenham's own line. And here we have a chassis again rebuilt and checked for alignment. During the next three and a half years, it must cover over 150,000 miles, with dust, grit, rain and mud beating against it. To protect it from these corrosive elements, it's given a covering of aluminium paint in a special booth where the operator can complete the job in 30 minutes. At the end of five days in the standings, each bus body is remarried to a chassis almost certainly not the one from which it was separated when it entered the works. Any bus body can be fitted onto any chassis with satisfying precision. During the next three and a half years, each bus must pick up something like 1,295,000 passengers, carry them along and set them down again safely. Given the sound construction, the safety factor depends mainly on steering and brakes. And it's not wise to wait for a dog to step into the road or a zebra to start crossing to see how well they work. At Aldenham, they measure brake performance and hold on tight. Foot brake, a reading of 75 on the Tapley meter. 
Any less, and it would be wanting in efficiency. Any more, and it might be dangerous. As it is, a performance that can't be bettered by any vehicle on the road. And next, the handbrake. Then into the rectification shop. Near side brake links, readjust and retest. After that, rub down old makeup and prepare for repainting. Here, as elsewhere, a principle in practice. A job to be done. Study it carefully, decide on the best sequence, and then organize for maximum convenience, ease and speed. For example, you don't want paint on the windows. Now, at the far end of the works, the bus is brought round onto the paint line and points back towards London again. A job to be done and a man to do it. Again, a principle in practice. First, bring him into a suitable space to perform his task, a paint booth with filtered air to avoid damage from dust. Release him from worry about his clothes, his health. Arm him with the necessary equipment. Next, provide him with every possible mobility. Free him from having to wrestle with planks and ladders and ropes and hooks. Offer him a fair incentive, and you can reasonably expect that everyone, the man, the works, the bus concern and the public, will get the benefit of a good, fast job. For speed and binding property, wet top coat goes on wet undercoat. And then two coats of varnish, each oven dried at 130 degrees Fahrenheit. All to produce a protective skin, proof against corrosion and rust for three and a half to four years. After that, it begins to deteriorate. And that is why every bus in London's entire fleet must be overhauled in that period of time. three and a half and four years to overhaul the entire standard fleet. That's about 44 buses every week. In a few years' time, it'll be nearer 60. But at the moment, the buses come out of Aldenham at the rate of one every hour. Last stages, nearing the time when it will plunge back into the world of commerce, a mobile information board whose advertisements are designed to fit into its basic pattern. The collection of parts becomes a bus once more. A vehicle designed to carry people to the factory, the shops, the cinema, the church, the dance hall, the school, the country. To see Mother, Aunt Jane, the Smiths, the Browns, the Cahoon Roberts. And bring them all comfortably back home again. Important business to be conducted only under license. Every vehicle shall comply in all respects with the requirements as to the construction, weight and equipment of motor vehicles. And the vehicle, including all bodywork, upholstery and fittings, shall be soundly and properly constructed of suitable materials, well finished and in good and serviceable condition. And whenever, at tea break, men sit in the canteen, the chances are they may see flowing out of the works a few of the buses which, with their knowledge, skill and diligence, they've made good for another period of service. Another three and a half years of carrying Londoners in the comfort, the economy and the style to which they're accustomed. <laughs>